In regards to the offense this season, uh, Lane Kiffin had made a comment to a, a number of times during the summer that Matt Corral was the best quarterback coming back in college football. He certainly looked at that way at times, maybe minus uh, some of the picks. He's already made his way into Ole Miss history a number of times in the record book, but uh, limiting the interceptions would be a good step in the right direction. Yes, and exactly, and I think Corral is really, you know, a lot of the a lot of people have kind of you know, Ole Miss has kind of been shunned out of the preseason polls. You know, when the when ESPN dropped their their top five SEC run games, and Ole Miss was, was left out of that. But I think it's kind of right now the the players, along with the coaches and everything, are really using that to work with the chip on their shoulder, and it seems to be working. Uh, the I mean, when you look at what Matt Corral did, despite you know those interceptions, every. He's really improved, uh, you know, just in the key week, just in the first week of fall camp. Um, he definitely, de- he even looks even better than he did, you know, after his season they had last year. Because if you think about it, during he in 2020 against an all SEC schedule, he became only the fourth SEC quarterback in college football history to lead the nation in total offense per game, you know. And he joined the company of uh, Pat Sullivan, Johnny Manziel, you know, in the third being Rex Grossman. So after, like you said, the, the yardage he threw and, and what he did, and he looks to even be proof. But I think what's really, what you're really seeing in the offense right now, especially in fall camp, it looks really explosive. And granted, they aren't in a game day out this year. Granted, they, you know, they don't have Alabama and other teams breathing down, the defense is breathing down their neck. But I think what's really going to, what we're really going to see even not just more explosiveness, but more consistency because of the returners in the starting position we have, not just in Matt Corral. But also, it's uh, the entire backfield return to Ole Miss. You have Ely and Connor, which is probably one of the best dynamic duos in the SEC. And then you have Parrish Bullock. And, of course, John Rice Plumley um, continuing to be changed to the slot is going to be a really uh, – he's going to become really a, an impact player. And we're already seeing it, you know, just from fall camp and just what little we've seen there. So it's going to be really interesting to see Plumley and, and the packages that Kiffin's going to run for Ely as far as the offense because – you know, during SEC Media Days, Kiffin mentioned how expect uh, not just for Ely to be, you know, taking handoffs, but also, you know, be taking catches as well. So it's going to be really interesting now to see, you know, Plumley make that transition to the slot and then having a dynamic duo like Ely and Connor, and like I said, Parrish out there to really um, even if that if, if that offense couldn't be even more explosive, it probably is. But one of the key points, you know, I think for this offense and especially for Matt Corral is that it's consistency. This is the first season um, that he's not going to have a new offensive coordinator. He's not going to have a new, you know, scheme to learn. There, there's finally there's finally some stability and consistency, and I think that's really helped Matt Corral in this off season. And like I said, we're already seeing we're already seeing what um, being able to have you know the same same kind of uh, pattern going in the routine has really helped um, him and along to be even a stronger signal caller. Like I said, now having the same offense, same same read, same play calling, surrounding by, like I said, all the, the returning talent and the young talent that's fixing to emerge is going to be really um, really a key factor, I think, that's going to make even offensively Ole Miss even more explosive. And one of the key things that I think has been really um, uh, for, for the Rebel offense this year is, like I said, the returning of veterans and one particular uh, area is that offensive line. They're returning four, four of their five off, you know, offensive linemen, which is which is huge. So there's not going to be a lot of transitions. The Corral is really going to be able to have a protective uh, front force as insurance um, to be able to focus on getting to those tar- target playmakers that I've that I've spoken about in Ely and Plumley and and Parrish and whatnot. So, like I said, you know, the transition and, and things for Matt. Matt Corral and, and his uh, his arsenal are have been very smooth in comparison to last year. And like I said, I think, again, it's that consistency finally that Kiffin has brought the foundation along with the consistency of, of having Levy as the same coordinator and having a lot of returning veterans um, in that backfield as long as new talent emerge. Yeah, 64 starts uh, back along the offensive line despite the loss of right tackle Roy, Royce Newman to uh, the Green Bay Packers in the NFL and like you, Leanne, I cannot think of five better backfields in the SEC. So I don't know what the ranking system was there, but uh, I think the Rebs are certainly a top five unit at running back. And John Rice Plumley already showed us uh, with some key catches down the stretch in the Outback Bowl uh, that he could be a factor in the slot. So another weapon there for Ole Miss football, despite losing uh, their two best pass catchers 
uh, this past season. Uh, Leanne Herring joining us from the Rebel Walk to break down Ole Miss football with uh, the season just about three weeks away. Leanne, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us, Mark, and hotty toddy.